So uh, let's start with my introduction about the Orbit instruments. Um, normally, not here in office products for wholesale patch clamping. Um, and we offer machines for that in uh, various levels of throughput. A whole different approach, however, would be to record uh, artificial bilayers. Um, so you build an artificial bilayers to investigate certain species, and why would you actually do that? Well, there are certain advantages. You can, for example, reach uh, proteins of um, uh, cell organelles, such as the ryanodine receptor and the endoplasmatic reticulum, or you can do actually uh, single ion channel recordings, which is normally uh, done in um, cell attached mode while patch clamping, which is um, well really tedious to do and it's hard to only get one channel, so you can purify that channel and uh, add it to a bilayer. Or you can study uh, species such as antimicrobial peptide or toxins, which form pores in artificial bilayers. Um, and Another thing that you can do is a single molecule detection um, with uh, nanopores um, made from protein or DNA. And we will uh, uh, hear more about these latter points later on in the second talk today. So um, what is the Orbit Mini all about? Well, um, in the upper left corner you can see a classical bilayer setup. And um, these are the gold standard in the field for decades now, and they work really well. But as you can see, you have your uh, Teflon cups, you have a Faraday cage, you have an amplifier, and you have a digitizer. And you have one recording channel, so one data set you can record at a time. And the Orbit Mini is as big as an external hard drive. You have four totally separate channels, and it's actually really easy to use. And um, Another advantage would be that the membranes are positioned horizontally, so you can, for example, put them under a fluorescence microscope to get an optical readout while you record your currents. And uh, what we will introduce this year, we already have a working prototype, is um, an automated uh, liquid perfusion system, so you can exchange buffers while recording. So how does actually uh, this technique work? Well, we have the so-called microelectrode cavity array chips, which we use in our orbit system. In these chips, you find four cylindrical cavities. And the bottom of these cavities is actually the driven electrode. So this is a silver-silver chloride electrode that is connected to the head stage of the amplifier. You have four of those. And these cavities are filled with buffer and then spanned with an artificial lipid bilayer. Um, how do you actually do that? Well, we're talking about classical painted membranes. So you would have lipids in organic solvents such as octane or decane, and you would uh, apply those lipids to the cavities and um, generate a bilayer that spans this cavity. So some people use uh, still a brush. This is why it's called a painted membrane. Actually, you can use a glass rod or you can use a Teflon rod. Depends on what you want to do. What I would recommend is painting these uh, bilayers with an air bubble. So you would just use a pipette tip on a pipette that you would just uh, dip into your lipid solution. And we have a nice video about this on our homepage. So I would refer to the homepage in this regard if you want to get an idea of how this works, actually. A um, uh, question I get asked frequently is, what do I want to do if I need asymmetric recording conditions? I can't reach this cavity anymore once I spent the bilayer. Well, this is true, but you can apply a trans solution first, and I don't want to call it internal or external solution, as this depends on the orientation of the protein. I rather call it trans solution. I fill the chip with it. Then I generate my bilayer on the chip, and then I'm able, without breaking these bilayers, to exchange the recording solution, so the buffer on the on the uh, cis side, so on the upper side of this bilayer. And then I end up with totally asymmetric buffer conditions. So as long as the bilayers don't touch air, they are stable enough uh, for buffer exchange. So you can apply pH gradients, calcium gradients, uh, you can entrap activate as you would need from the um, trans side actually. So this is no problem at all. Um, next thing would be how do I actually um, add the species I want to record? Well, if you're really lucky, like with toxins or antimicrobial peptide, those species are just uh, water-soluble, so you can just add them to your membrane at a certain holding potential. 
Or you have, and this is like the classical example, you have um, partly hydrophobic species like uh, membrane proteins. You would purify those, have them in detergent micelles, and add them to your lipid bilayer. So you would get a um, dilution of these detergent molecules, so the micelles uh, will not be stable anymore, and the protein goes into the, will integrate into this bilayer. A uh, third thing you can do is if you have native vesicles, for example, with diameters in the uh, nanometer range, you can add those vesicles with the protein of interest to your lipid bilayer and via a hyperosmotic shock, you could um, drive fusion of these vesicles with the bilayer. So uh, you end up with the protein of interest in the bilayer re you record. And I skip due to time reasons on uh, examples of these recordings, as we will come to that later in the second talk. And I can only refer to our homepage, um, where we have uh, a vast collection of proteins we recorded with this technique so far. So another thing I want to men mention is that we have a temperature control for the Orbit Mini. So you can, for example, perform experiments at physiological temperature. But really interesting is that you can not only heat the whole chip and the recording solutions and the bilayers up, but you can also cool it down. Um, so I can, for example, influence kinetics. So if I, for example, do particle sizing through a nanopore, or if I have events that would normally at room temperature or, or at physiological temperature be too fast to record, I could slow the kinetics down and thus widen these um, events up which is a really interesting application. Another thing would anything that uh, is activated or deactivated by temperature, for example, the trip channels, um, they are normally ligand gated channels, but they are also activated by heat. Some of them or, for example, by colder temperatures, others of them. And you can really nicely investigate those with your orbit mini with temperature control. So um, I should furthermore mention the bigger brother of the Orbit Mini, which is the Orbit 16, as this is the setup that uh, Professor Hovorka actually uh, used for most of the data he will present in the next talk. Here you have a 4 times 4 array, so 16 totally separate channels. And you have the huge advantage that you don't need to manually paint these 16 separate lipid bilayers. You can just do that uh, on the push on the button because you have a steer bar inside the machine that will then automatically spread the lipids in a way that you end up with 16 fully functional uh, bilayers, as you can see on the next slide. So we use the commercially available uh, small peptide gramicide in A to uh, probe if we are really dealing with fully th thinned out and thus functional bilayers. And as you can see, you have nice activity in all 16 channels. and on this slide, you can see that you can zap these bilayers and just by a push on the button, repaint all 16 of them. And of course, you wouldn't do that on purpose during an experiment. But if you add your protein, for example, or if you apply high potentials, what happens normally is that some of these bilayers break and it's really easy just by a push on a button to get all these bilayers back.